you're going to notice one thing in this video. I'm up and walking around, and in later videos, I am not. I actually filmed this video a couple of years ago, but never got around to editing it or uh, sending it out. So you're going to see me walking around. I don't anymore. I'm uh, stuck in a wheelchair. And we may get into that uh, in a future video, and I'll explain what happened. Uh, there's nothing too insinuous, but uh, yeah, that's why. All right, welcome back to the channel, Dirt Cleaner Videos. Here you're here in the home of Superior Lapidary. Kind of a mess right now. Uh, what I have to do now is another project. The last time you saw me, I rebuilt the uh, HP 18 inch saw. I put, I put a new split nut on it, a couple of front and rear bushings. I've got to do a similar job to, an, to another saw. I actually started this project three or four years ago. I had my machine in another building and it just kind of quit working on me. And I, I had good intentions of fixing it up, but as things go, I never got to it. So here's, here's what we got. I got my 18-inch Fran Tom. And as you can see, when things aren't running, they tend to uh, collect stuff. That's not how a saw should be. Heck, the blade's off and I got buckets in there. So what we got to do is fix this one up. This has basically, I believe, the same problem that the HP had. The, uh, the split nut is wore out, so it just rides on the, on the shaft. We'll examine that a little bit closer later. But first I got to put this in a new spot. I got to clean the junk out of here. I've got a place next to my HP. Let's take a little walk. This one is running splendidly. So we're going to try and do the same thing with the Franton. Get another one. I'd love having more rock saws going. Got the 30 inch Covington back there. And right here are a bunch of spheres that I have preformed. And then there's some left to do. And some in the bucket. I got some uh, what's called Northern Lights from the Upper Michigan. I got stuff from around the world. I got a shelf full of cubes. So I got to do is some pretty interesting stuff under there. We'll take a look at that later on. But right now, let's get to uh, rearranging the room and then repairing Mr. Franton. So I'll show you the quick diagnosis of this problem. Uh, look at the split nut after. So here's your carriage, holds, holds the rock, slides back and forth, works on a Worm gear is basically just a piece of threaded rod. I'm going to engage those. That engages the split nut, so it grabs a hold of that threaded rod. And that should lock it in place. It should move, but when I grab it, it slides. So what I've got is wore out teeth. Uh, the split nut is made of brass or something like that. The steel shaft should be good. So I hoping my diagnosis is correct on this, that the uh, split nut is just wore out. So I went to Highland Park Lapidary and we'll go take a look at their site and you can see just what I did to order the new parts. It's pretty simple. Once again, we'll engage that. You see, it. it that's what happens. It just slides on the shaft. So I do have a spare shaft if we need it. Hopefully we don't. I'm going to try just changing out the split nut with the new split nut that I got from Highland Park. Here we are, back at the computer. We're going to take a look and see what it's going to take to order a couple of uh, parts for the Frantom. So it's hplapidary.com. I scroll down to replacement parts on the left hand column. In the pictures you've got uh, a few different choices. I'm going to Franton Parts. Pretty simple process. You just got to wait for it to load up. Uh, I ordered the, the front bushing for the drive feed. We'll add that to cart. Continue shopping. And the rear bushing. Continue shopping. And then I got the Frantom Split Nut Feed Dog Conversion Kit. Let's take a quick look at that. Here's what they show. You've got a couple different pictures of it. There's an old one. 
So let's add that to card. Two hundred. Let's go to the checkout. You can either uh, check out as a guest or you can register. I am registered, but uh, I'm just not going to log in right now. Uh, you're going to get free shipping on these parts. I had originally ordered a replacement split nut kit for this many months ago, and it didn't come in. They did charge me for it on my credit card, and it just never showed up. Well, several months passed, and I started looking, and I hadn't realized I had done that. So I decided it was time to fix the saw. I uh, purchased another one, put it on the credit card, and pretty quick after got a call back from uh, one of the staffers at HP Lapidary, and they said, hey, you already have one of these on back order, so we'll just refund your money on the second one, and that's what they did. Uh, they could have not done that, but they chose to uh, do the right thing and refund my money. That's 247 bucks. I had forgotten I'd actually ordered it. So... So the moral of the story is they took care of their customer pretty well on that end. Uh, the one part I'm not happy with is it was on back order for many months. So I further the phone conversation and they said, well, we're getting our container in. We'll be unloading it soon and hopefully uh, the part will be on there. And within two weeks, I had that uh, at my house. So their lead time sometimes on purchasing can be a little rough just the way they operate business. Uh, they get their parts shipped in on containers from overseas and uh, they just have to fill a container to get a shipment, otherwise it's not worthwhile. Anyway, it worked out. I got the part and now we're gonna proceed and go see if it, if it works. Let's see what came in that package. That arrived at the doorstep. You get a new handle, that comes with it. And there is your split nut, and it is adjustable. These little cams here will help you out. So I can't wait to put this thing on. That's the next thing we're going to do, is we're going to put on the new, the new split nut. There we go. Just for clarification, I had ordered bushings previously, the front and the rear bushings. They came with the shaft that I ordered, the drive shaft. Uh, we'll have to check this out. I may or may not use these. It all depends. So anyway, I got front and rear bushings too. All right, I'm back at the saw. This is hopefully the day we're going to get this thing going. Um, I've drained all the oil out of here, actually cleaned it out. Do a little oil and recycling. Anytime you get into a saw, just go ahead and do that and do it as often as you can otherwise. There, it looks like there's two bolts. It takes a half inch wrench. Take this off. Uh, sorry, we're going to get in the shadows. Lighting is horrible here. Right, first one's loose. I'm not sure what else I'm going to have to take apart. So this is, a, by guessing, by golly, they're not on too tight. So that's kind of nice. I believe the uh, thing they're screwed into is machined, so I don't have nuts on the back of this one. That makes it much nicer. It's kind of a pain getting in there. I... Oh, don't worry, we're going to fast forward through some of these parts. I think I got the other one off. I've got it backed off as far as it'll go and then the bolt backs into uh, some of the little parts down here and stops it. But I think I've got it out. If not, I've got to take this apart. Take the handle off or something. I'd rather not, but if we have to, we have to.
Well, yeah, part of it's off, but I've, this doesn't lift off, so. So there's a nut on the back side, which was only finger tight. And there's a star washer. All right, I need an Allen wrench for this one, and uh, maybe three eighths or seven sixteenths for that one. So we'll be back here in a minute. Okay, there is a washer in there. Oh, maybe two. Two washers. I'm going to put this nut and the star washer back on. Actually, I like that handle. It's plastic coated, plastic dipped uh, OEM stuff. The new one didn't get that treatment. That's kind of sad. That really did nothing to loosen it up. I got the spring on here, but. go crazy and get the spring off and maybe it'll still snap. <laughs> Sock it'll be a little more handy but this will work. Uh, 7 sixteenths is what this one turned out to be. That is all. Now the jaw does open up on top. There are a couple of bolts at the bottom. Looks like they got to come off. I'm wondering if that has to happen to put the new one on. We're going to find out. Actually, the shaft has to come off because. Yes, this uh, this plate here, it's just a round hole cut in here, so I've got to take this drive shaft off. See, check in here too, there's some wear in there. I do have bushings, hopefully they're the right ones, so this one's going to get bushings just like the HP did. So pretty much you have to take the drive shaft out. That's just a nut on a stud with a uh, star washer. I can feel that with my fingers. All right, so we got one nut off. There's a star washer and a large flat washer. Now I have a uh, tiny Allen wrench here. I'm pretty certain I'm going to have to take this uh, either the front or the back tailpiece off. And we're taking this front headpiece off. See where that gets me. Again, that's a half inch wrench. And then I have a star washer and a flat washer. Some time ago, 
my on off switch went bad on this so I fashioned a new one to replicate the old one uh, it works it's not the best but I think I can get a new one now I'll look into that that might be another video replacing the stop switch on these All right, and those bolts, four of them, protrude through the front of the saw, from the front to the inside. So you got to kind of unscrew them. They're pretty snug fit in there. Now they made some dynamite saws back in the day. This Fran Tom is a, is a good, well-built saw. I wish you made them just like this today. However, there are some things in today's saws that you can't beat. Some of the safeties they're putting on them, you know, might save you from taking a big oil bath one day. That's that's always a plus. I've done that a couple of times, especially on my smaller lower tone, my 12-inch lower tone. I've opened the cover on that, and the way that switch works, it is just on the edge of turning back on. You bump it, and that saw turns on and you catch a face full of oil. I've done that a few times. It's not fun. Of course one of the bolts interferes when I'm trying to take it out with the electrical box on the front of the saw. Also on the front where the bolt goes in it has a washer as well. Okay, the four bolts are out. I'm probably going to have to take the back off. I just can't see where there would be enough room for this. To... No, the back's got to come out too. Son of a gun. <laughs> That's life. Yeah, there's no good way to take the carriage assembly off either. That's just not going to happen. Well, then a couple of these bolts. Or in a gearbox in the back with a cover on it. I don't know if they're gonna how this is gonna work, but I, I probably gotta get a lot deeper into the saw than I was hoping. You can see the parts, you just can't quite take them off. Alright, the bolts are off. I don't know if that's gonna allow me enough room to. Nope. So, what I'm running into right now, I could pull this up, but it's hitting the screws to, that hold the electrical box on. And they're right under there. So, I got to get a little tiny screwdriver and take that off. Okay. I don't have to take them off, out totally, just far enough so that they're uh, flush. So it feels like they're threaded into this case. And right about there. But it hits the uh, the frame there, so that doesn't work. So those bolts I got to push out. Two of them are, could fall to the ground. Two of them are going to fall within a case in the back. So yeah, again, right back here. At least these two go into a case, which is outlined by I think these bolts. These two will push out. All right, we're at the back of the saw. The first bolt, no trouble at all. That comes right out. Fourth bolt, same thing, it's hidden. It's just behind here. That comes out, the washer stayed on. They also have uh, some sealant on there. I'm not sure what it is. I assume there's oil in here. I've never looked, never heard. Oh, it is packed full of grease. But I've got two bolts on the other side of that. They got to come out. And that is the smaller 760. Another nut. Sounds like a 
fell inside the case. Well, that's pretty pretty neat. That is one grease-filled. Wow. Anyway, there it is. So behind here, I got a couple of bolts that are protruding through that I got to get out. So I got to clean this grease out. Sadly. Filled this up so nicely, I feel bad taking it apart. There's a piece of uh, cork gasket here. I'm going to be careful with that and leave it there. Nothing has leaked out of here. That cork gasket right here has done a marvelous job for who knows how long. I don't want to have to put one back on. It's the evidence of a gasket that was on there. I may have to make one. Or we'll just RTV it. That might be the simpler solution. And right behind there, I'm getting to the uh, the bolts that I needed to get to. I just wanted enough out of here so it's not gooping all over the place. I don't have to. I don't have to clean this. But since this is going so good. Get as much out as I can. Maybe this gear will come out the back, and I actually didn't need to take those out. We'll see. All right. There's probably a lock on that back thrust washer or whatever it is. So we're going to open it up. All right, I popped the belt loose. And now I'm going to spin this oh, one way or the other. The center shaft, the drive shaft, is turning. And what I've done, I've got to point it up. On the very top, I'm trying to get some better light. I got that Allen screw pointed to the top. So we'll take that off. Ooh, come on, snap. Dang it. Something will give. It'll either be the wrench or the screw eventually. Booger. Alright, I might have to get a short uh, handle one. Try something a little different here. Something without so much flex. Less flex, that helped a lot. Okay, so if you're just changing the split nut, I'm assuming you don't need to take out the four bolts and the front and back tail pieces, and eight bolts. The shaft would come out the back, you could replace it that way, but I think this is going to help me if I take that apart so I can do the bushings a little easier than my last saw. All right, now we're going to flip this around and see if that shaft pulls out the back. All right, that does happen. Well, all right, we're catching on things. I got to go to the front and uh, do something. All right, that front bushing was is what caught up on there. All right, we got some real world problems do, doing a real world repair. Here's the shaft. This is loose, but it won't come off of the shaft. So I'm going to play with that. Maybe I'll try tapping it with a hammer. 
Sorry about the claw hammer, but there we go. That was simple. Simpler than I thought. Okay. So there we have that with the Allen screw holding it in. Now, there we are with the old, uh, the old split nut. That's out of there. Yes, it does. So, there's the shaft. Just feeling across it. The threads feel okay. Don't feel any dull spots. I'll set that uh, in here for a while. Okay, still got those two bolts in the back to push out. Um, yeah, I think I'm taking this carriage out so it'll be a little easier to replace the bushings. That's what I got to do. But I got to get those two bolts in the back so the back can drop down. The front will pull up. Right now it hits the front lip. I think that's my problem. So I got to get a container for all my nuts and bolts. I don't want to lose anything. I got to pick up the ones, the nuts and washers in the back that dropped in. Um, I took the two remaining bolts out of the back. Um, clean more grease up back there. So now we're going to attempt to see if this will come out as one. <laughs> well, it's pretty tight tolerance here. Uh, sadly, I don't want to, but I think I got to take these off. This does not. Oh, boy, there's just enough room. All right, I probably don't even have to take this to the workbench. I can access the bushing here, flip it around. I can access the bushing right here, so we can. I'll check my bushings to see if they look like I have the right ones. I'll work on the front one, then we'll go to the back one. And then we'll we'll reassemble. That's the plan. So I gotta find my bushings now. And oops, let's see. There they are. Alright, the front and the rear. Well, they're different bushings. Um, the one with the smaller diameter interior, inside diameter, must go to the back. It would have to be that way, so the one with the larger goes to the front. Yeah, roughly speaking. All right, so I've got a socket that's just, I can, you maybe can't see it, but I can feel it. The socket is just a hair smaller than the outside diameter of this. So hopefully that is what I'll use to uh, knock this out. Actually, this would be the smaller diameter one because the shaft comes in from the back. So I misspoke before. This is a smaller diameter one, inside diameter. Oh, yeah. There we are, it's as simple as that. There. It should go right in that hole. Absolutely. I know the back has to be flush or, or indented. The inside can go proud a little bit. I can feel it there. But if this side was proud, I'd never get it back in there. So there, that bushing is installed. So, there's the old bushing, there's the new one, they feel about the same, yep. Yeah, I can feel it wants to start, so.
right, there we are. It's at least flush. It's a little proud on that side, and that's fine. Yeah, they've got a uh, stopper here. It's kind of neat. I think it grabs, yeah, it stops your feet. Well, it should just slip right back in the way it slipped out. Of course, it doesn't want to. That's how tight the tolerances are. I'm kind of impressed by that. And it's a strong case, so it's not like I'm going to bend it and get it in. It came out, it'll go in. so close. <laughs> there it is. That was simple. All right, we're close. Not worried about the washers and stuff in this first one. This first one's just alignment bolt. About a sixteenth of an inch off. I did not expect the hardest part of this to be lining up a couple of well machined bolt holes. Alright, we're having a little trouble getting these bolts lined up. So I think I need to straighten this up a little. We're going to shim the back and try and get it into place. pop loose. Well, instead of a drift punch, what I've got is a screwdriver. Since I got these holes started, we're going to try and line them up this way. That should work pretty good. First one started. That's good news. All right, we're going to see if we can get a couple of the back bolts in. Take my screwdriver drift punch. All right, those two center ones are in, so that made quick work of that. I'm going to grab the other two while I can. the other two in front. They're not going to play nice, we know that. Alright, that one went in. 
screw up the threads, but... Never hammer bolts in. Nothing else, screw them in. I just don't have enough room to put the socket on this one. The tap won't hurt. Alright, the four front, four bolt, back bolts are in. We're just going to get the, uh, let's get the washers, flat washers, and uh, star washers on. We're going to get these all started is the plan. All right, they're started. We're going to wrench tighten them, then we're going to see if our carriage slides back and forth correctly. Ones are tightened up, tighten up the front ones. Alright, those are tightened up. Gleefully that's done. Now we gotta start putting the shaft back in. All I'm gonna do is wipe it down. Not the real greasy end though. I actually need to see nothing wrong with that. We'll just get a look at this real quick. We well, get some there's a little damage there. It must be where that set screw hits her. I'm not going to file it. If I have trouble getting this back together, I will file that. But right now, I don't think I'm going to. So I'm just going to wipe her down up to the greasy spot. There. We'll go to the back. because I still have to put the, uh, the split nut on there. Hmm. There she jams up there for some reason. I'll have to see what I'm up against. Ah, she fits. It's just going through a new bushing. It's much tighter and it wants to hold it straight. A lot better than it used to be. Alright, there's that. Uh, we're getting close to putting this on. That goes on there and I think that's the bigger one goes in the back. Uh, they've, the keeper that goes in back, I've got to get these on. So the keeper goes on before the split nut. I'm so close. Alright, you don't get it, I have to get it on all the way yet. And now, Back to the split nut. I'm going to separate these by hand. And before we go too far, I've got to get the uh, other keeper on. Oh, too far. that on. Now we're just at the point to get her into the bushing. Boom! It's in. But to make sure it's in all the way, and before I set my keepers, I've got to look at the back gears and see if they meshed up properly. 
Let's take a look at the back gears. So I believe what we want is for this gear to be directly in line with the center of that. And honestly, I'm right there. It might be a 64th off or a 32nd off, but I, I'm going to give it a tap with a hammer. And that looks pretty good. No, well, that's all we get. He is there. So now what I must do is get that last, that, that keeper there. Well, that I got the tap because that's, I showed you it's a little rough back there. And I just got to snug this up a little. There, got that one on. Now we're going to go to the front one. And that will keep any lateral movement from happening, if that's what you call it, uh, in this shaft. So it should stay put. Oh, yeah. That's much better. There's no, no bouncing in there. When I had this the other time with the old one in there, you heard it go clunk, 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 clunk. So these bushings have helped a ton. So if you're putting on one of these, put in your bushings. That's all i got to say. There's no reason not to. Now I've got to figure out how to get this in here. First big problem. The two. Let's get the camera down where we can see it. Dang, I was so close to being done tonight. Now it's not going to happen until I figure this out. I'll show you what's going on. It's a bugger. Uh, this bolt hole and that bolt hole are supposed to line up with the bolt holes. On the OEM piece, they do not. They don't even come close. They're certainly an inch, inch high. Okay, I don't know if you can see the plane, but yeah, they're about an inch. These holes are drilled about an inch off. All right, I got to look into that and see what could possibly be the problem. If I've got the wrong parts, if they're manufactured wrong, if I've got a different machine but yeah that's these are bolt holes are going to be down almost an inch I can probably drill them out but boy it's going to be tough well I can probably drill them out I'll use the other one for a pattern okay uh, we're going to have to take this apart and I think do some retrofit drilling boy I hope I can get that straight when you see this next I'm going to take it apart It'll be taken apart, and uh, we're going to be working on the workbench. All right, so much for finishing this in one day. Well, another day's coming. All right, we got it apart. And now for a little better view of what's going on. You see the two little bolts right at the top of the screen? They don't come anywhere near close to going through those two holes I have. So I've got to drill two holes precisely where those are. So it mounts correctly to the carriage. So I can use this as a template, but I think I might have to take this all apart. This is kind of kind of funky. So we'll check my engineering skills. Anyway, that's what I'm up against. Took the threaded shaft, the drive shaft. I've got it in the, on the bench vise. I've got both the old 
and the new split nut feed dog on here. They both clamp onto the shaft very well. Uh, I was going to do it otherwise, but there's no way to get these two surfaces together. There's a gap there. And then I was going to take these little bolts out, these mounting bolts, but they don't come out. They interfere and fit with the rest of it. And I still, I just want to keep this together. So I've got this lined up, and what I did, real simply, I took a, a, a near straight edge. You can feel with your fingers uh, just a thousandth of an inch difference practically. So I've got it lined up straight. There's a little bit of leeway in these holes for the bolts. I'm just going to try and mount them, get them to the center. And we're going to make a mark. Got a little square, but I put two ends on it. Sometimes I've just had the, had the need to do that. So now what my plan is to get these lined up just so and I'll know the center of the bolt. So I gotta, excuse me, we gotta get that lines up center. There's that. Okay, I've got those marked. Now I can remove the top split nut. <clears throat> I've got these marks on here and as I looked I could see they were just a smidgen of an inch outboard where they needed to be. That's the difference. This is the uh, original hole, and that is the hole that I put in, these two here. So let's see if I, <laughs> if I did this right. Well, I got the holes drilled in. One of them was a little bit off. I had to elongate the hole a little bit to one side. I hope I got it the right way, uh, but it's, it should fit. And then I wanted to use the original bolts from the original piece, so I had to take the spring section off of the original piece anyway. I probably should have done that before. Let's see if it bolts up. Of course, bolting up is only half the battle. and We have to make sure it lines up on the uh, threaded rod and make sure that doesn't Oof up. It's not a lot of room in here for my old fat fingers to work. No, 
Okay, both are in. Piece does go up and sits flush, so that's good news. Of course, the bolts don't want to go in by hand. All right, well they're snugged up. Now we got to see the the big question is, will the split nut seat correctly? All right, well I got to get the handle on. It uh, didn't seem really worth it to do that before. The handle would have been totally in my way. Handle moves right. It uh, the left jaw isn't opening. Only the one to the right is opening up. Yeah, take a look down here. As I move the handle, the right jaw opens. The left one doesn't. So apparently, I've got that a little too tight. Alright, what I'm going to do now is run the shaft through and then I'll set the, there's some little stops on there. Get that in too far, we got to get that back bushing on. All right, I got this far enough up, we're getting the uh, carriage. So we're pretty close. You can see it's just coming through the carriage right now. I'm going to kind of wiggle it through a little bit further. You can go around to the back side and just bop it a little bit. Again, I'm going to check the up and down. We don't want to have any thrust one way or the other. I've got that uh, the new front and rear bushings in. I checked the back. It's in line like it was before. Tighten down the uh, 
Keep her here. There's one in the back. So there's some stops hidden here, and I would suggest going to the uh, Highland Park HP Lapidary.com and look for their Fran Tom videos, and they'll show you exactly how to line those up. Uh, unfortunately, with what I had going on here, I've got to line these up while they're on the saw. I don't have the luxury of uh, doing it off the saw. So I open up the jaws, get them placed centered. Snip the bolt a little bit. It holds the stop. Sorry, there's just no way to get the camera in there without destroying the camera. Super pain in the butt. I better put an extension on here. All right, that one is sufficiently tight. Still fairly centered. And by centered I mean the shaft going through the through the jaws. I got a little, little bit of a touch there. That's gonna wear something out pretty fast. I think that's on the bottom of the jaw. So there's a chance I've got this set too high with my bolt holes. I don't know. worse as I go back. Well, I'm not sure what to make of that. Uh, I might be sacrificing a little bit of brass on the very bottom of the split nut. I think that's where it's rubbing and that just might have to be the way it is. Uh, unless I can find a little bigger bushing to put on here, maybe that would help. So I need these to split apart just a hair more. I was just ready to put the cover back on here uh, and I realized as I was cleaning up the inside of the saw I made a mistake. I got a couple of uh, brass bowl thrust washers we'll call them. That one's got a nice shape to it. Uh, I did not put these on. These must go on either end of the drive shaft. So now I've got to take the drive shaft out and put these back on. That's a real world screw up. I guess you gotta pay the price. Well, it's not too bad putting that in and out several times. Give a little bump from the back. Tighten up the these little keepers with the thrust washers in them. Next, I got to get a little RTV on this uh, this cover. 
I'm not going to bother making a paper gasket for this one. Alright, we're ready for the cover. Each one of those bolts gets a uh, flat washer and a star washer. That's the way it came. That's how I'm putting it back. Alright, there's that. Uh, there's a little cover that goes on the back. I'm going to weigh it with that. I'm not going to put the grease in yet. I've got to make sure this thing is working before I do that. So I'm going to clear all the junk out of here. Uh, probably plug it in and just spin it for a little bit free without a blade on there. Inside of the saw while well, it's going. Of course, we have no blade on there. It's running free. You can see the drive shaft is turning. Alright. Time to blade this bad boy up and uh, let's see what we can make out of her. The blade I'm putting on is also nearing the end of its life. I was waiting to get one until I. Uh, Got this saw running again. There's a nut on there. You don't have to get these blades too tight. Uh, all you're going to do is start warping things. All right, we're going to fire this one up again for a second. Ooh. All right. We got the oil in. It's hard to see down there, but it is touching the uh, it's touching the bottom of the blade. I might need a smidge more, but we're going to try it like this first and see. I just need my first rock victim. Got a piece of uh, Grand Canyon onyx. We got to do it with the, with the door shut. Let's see how she goes. Now your little noise. That's from the belt side of it. Might have that a little too tight. There we go. She made a cut. There's a little bit of blade wobble, but that's not, uh, that wasn't the problem I was looking into. But the cut straight, boy, it feels nice. So the 18 inch Fran Tom is back in business. Not quite perfect. I had a few little adjustments to make with the part I got from hplapidary.com. Um, God bless him for making that part. Once, like I said before, a lot of companies, they are done manufacturing a certain line or product and they go on to the next next one, they put a new serial number on it, and then they quit making parts for the old ones. That really leaves you in a lurch. Uh, the HP Lapidary guys, they've made parts for saws that they didn't, uh, you know, they didn't make them. They, didn't, they have no responsibility to make Fran Tom parts or the Lord Tone parts, but they do. Uh, I'll give them an A plus for that. We're going to give them about a B minus on the... Uh, on the piece itself, but it probably fit a different saw. If that's the case, they get A plus, thumbs up. If they're receptive to my phone call, we're going to talk to them guys in the next couple of days. 
they could probably simply punch in a couple little holes so you have your choice of these holes or those holes that make life a lot simpler. Um, they're back up to an A+. Plus. So we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty sure they're going to be receptive to that if they want to make a good product. Anyway, there it is. Uh, split, the Split Nut Feed Dog Retro Kit part is now in here. And I'm back cutting rocks again with my side. This thing has been down like three or four years since I've used it. And yeah, there we go. Inside of about a day and a half, maybe four hours worth of work, uh, boom, the saw is back in order. So, anyway, like, subscribe, comment if you wish. Uh, please be kind with your comments. Constructive comments are great. If you got something negative to say, say it in a nice way. Uh, if you have ideas of what I could have done better, glad to hear them too. So, anyway, spearlapidary.com, visit me, and uh, that's it for Dirt Cleaner videos. Thank you.